RFK is expected to add a third car. Denny Hamlin says charter agreements aren't close and Fox Sports did an anonymous driver poll and the results are pretty entertaining. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. The NASCAR Cup Series playoffs are only a few days away, but that has not slowed silly season news down quite yet. Because according to Jordan Bianchi at The Athletic, RFK Racing is progressing towards having a third car in 2025 to partner Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher. The driver of that third car, Ryan Priest, is the name that continues to come up. Now, I know that's a bit confusing. It's a bit perplexing. It's like giving Kyler Murray an extension. You're like, you haven't really done anything to warrant a good opportunity. Why? Why is this happening? Well, when you think about it, this makes more sense than the Cardinals giving Kyler Murray a big extension because Ryan Priest did race at JTG Diary Racing from 2019 until 2021 with Kroger sponsorship and reportedly has a very strong relationship with Kroger. The same thing that goes for Chris Buescher. When he was at JTG Diary Racing, he also apparently developed a really strong relationship with Kroger, which could be why Kroger is headed over to RFK Racing in 2025 when they depart JTG Diary Racing at the end of the 2024 season. But for Priest, it certainly is, in a sense, kind of failing upwards. At SHR, Priest only has two top fives and four top tens. In one year alone, 26 races, Noah Graxon has seven top tens, and Josh Berry has already matched him in 26 races as well, that being Ryan Priest with two top fives and four top tens. So it feels like Priest has definitely underperformed at Stuart Haas Racing, and now we'll be getting into a car that is definitely capable of winning races. We've seen RFK win races uh, the last three seasons, and there's no reason to think that they won't be able to do that also in 2025 as Brad Keselowski continues to turn around uh, RFK from being essentially the prime example of like a once what once was like that type of story to now what can be again resurrected them from the ashes like a phoenix uh, or whatever harry potter book that is but for brad this is a big time step he's talked openly about wanting to get rfk racing back up to a third car the same way that he wants to add an xfinity and truck team back into the program maybe even go imsa racing someday well getting a third cup car makes a lot of sense especially when you're going to have an abundance of sponsorship which they will have once kroger comes comes over as well. So Priest going over there, you know, in the grand scheme of things makes sense if he has a strong relationship with the sponsor. And maybe this is like a one to two year deal. Not really sure what it is yet. The biggest question now, once they do finally announce this, uh, because when Bob Pockers asked Brad Keselowski about this at NASCAR playoff media days on Wednesday, Brad laughed and it was like nothing to announce today, Bob, but maybe in the future. And then Bob's like, oh, so it's a possibility. And Brad said something along the, si- the lines of, well, anything is in the realm of possibility. It does seem like this is going to, to happen. The biggest question now is, where does the charter come from for this car? Because according to Bianchi, RFK and Keselowski don't want to run this as an open car, as an unchartered car, just because the financial hit is just too much. It doesn't make financial sense to do that. So where does that charter come from? Likely a lease agreement probably with like a Rick Ware Racing. They have a strong relationship with uh, RWR. And if they do lose Justin Haley, they are going to have to figure out two open seats for 2025. So maybe in the grand scheme of things, you know, take some cash from RFK, lease out one of those charters to them, allow them to be able to start every race. Or maybe they're the charter for sale that we just don't know about publicly yet. But I'm having a hard time trying to figure out where that one would come from at the moment. A lease deal definitely seems like the most logical approach. So RFK Racing expected to expand to three cars, and that's good for the sport. Another thing that would be good for the sport is a charter agreement. After two years, it felt like we might finally be close. NASCAR wanted to try to get charter negotiations wrapped up before the playoffs started on Sunday. And while they remain optimistic, Denny Hamlin at NASCAR playoff media day on Wednesday was not as optimistic. He remained steadfast that they are not anywhere near an agreement quite yet. Yeah, and he asked NASCAR media members, who is saying that we're close? NASCAR, of course they wanted to be close, but they continue to go in the wrong direction is what Hamlin was saying. Essentially, every time they send back a counterproposal, it's further away from what the teams want. And honestly, it's NASCAR kind of being like, hey, it's our court and our ball. If you want to play, well, these are our rules. Denny was also pretty upset that nobody from NASCAR leadership presented Tyler Reddick with his regular season championship trophy. The first time that has not happened in this you know, practice of having the regular season champion since I believe 2017. He felt that it might have been a slight at he and his team for their current stance in the NASCAR charter negotiations and being the most outspoken team, uh, you know, in them. Ultimately, what Denny Hamlin, Curtis Paul, Michael Jordan, and everyone at 2311 Racing is, is a complete overall of how NASCAR is structured. And honestly, they're just not going to get that. What they want is a true franchise model. And I've 
been on here before saying that that makes the most sense. The way NASCAR's franchise model is set up now with the charters really doesn't make that much sense. It's not like the NFL. Think about how the NFL is structured. That's not what NASCAR is. And that's what Denny Hamlin wants it to be structured like, like how the other major sports are, where they all work together in unison with like a commissioner. Everybody works together for the betterment of the sport. And right now it's NASCAR working for the betterment of NASCAR and the teams working for the betterment of themselves. And that's where we get this clash that we're currently in. I'm not saying either one is right or wrong. I'm just explaining kind of what the predicament that they are in is here. And ultimately, they're not going to get that. 2311 Racing and Denny Hamlin aren't going to get the whole perceptive change that they want and are arguing that NASCAR needs to give in and allow them. They're just not going to, going to get that. And I think that's where this stalemate comes from currently. And according to Denny, he said, there's probably some teams out there that are ready to sign right now with this charter agreement. He said, there's other teams, more business minded teams that are looking at this going, no, we're not ready to sign yet because they want, you know, X, Y, and Z to be changed. When it comes down to it, I think teams just want permanent charters. That doesn't seem like it's going to happen. They want to say, you know, on costly rule changes, that feels like something they should be allowed to have a say on. Being able to speak freely, that is certainly one that has become a new issue. It feels like once we get rid of one issue by coming to a solution for it, another issue is created, and then we're right back to square one every time we have these charter agreement updates. But ultimately, Denny Hamlin says that he has a number of drivers that are, you know, texting, or not drivers, but owners rather, that are texting him, griping about the current, you know, uh, charter proposal and this and that, and don't want to say anything publicly because they're afraid of uh, repercussions. So Denny goes out there and says it himself. And he says, I don't want to be a megaphone, but you know, if he has to be the loudest one in the room, I guess he's going to continue to do that. But at some point, a charter agreement has to come into place, right? Right? Before December 31st, preferably, maybe, or at least the Daytona 500. I just hope something gets done at some point. And then last but not least, coming out of NASCAR Media Days, Fox Sports did an anonymous driver poll where they had the 16 drivers from the playoffs anonymously answer a few questions that they had. And one of those questions is what track should host the championship race? And number one on the list was Las Vegas with seven votes. Homestead came in second at six votes and Charlotte at four votes. And I'll be honest, a Las Vegas championship race makes a ton of sense, except for the fact that it's an SMI track, so that will never happen. Homestead is, of course, where everybody wants the race to go back to. Darlington would re be really fun. Some drivers mentioned that as well. And Charlotte, while it is the home track for NASCAR, once again, is an SMI date. The Coke 600 has been a banger in recent years. It'd be cool to see, but it just doesn't feel like that's ever going to happen. When asked, do you like the current championship format? Eight drivers answered no. Seven drivers answered yes. One driver answered IDK, which means I don't know for all the olds out there that aren't aware of that. And in the driver comment section, one driver wrote, it sucks ass. So <laughs> things are going well with the championship format. I would tend to not like the championship format. I, If we have to have a playoffs, give me a 10 race uh, playoff, 10 drivers, whoever has the most points at the, at the end of those 10 races wins the championship. I can get behind that. Obviously, I'm a traditionalist, would love to have a 36 race championship come back regardless of what people think. Oh, somebody could wrap it up two years or two races before the final race of the season. Okay, fine. Yeah, they did a really good job. Everybody else should have done better. Not every year is going to be an absolute banger. Not every year is going to be 1992. Not every year is going to be 2021 in Formula One. And that's fine because it makes you appreciate those moments more. I would argue that the game seven winner takes all, you know, championship format that we have now hasn't really garnered any of those moments that are at least really that lasting, where you'll remember a crazy championship run. I mean, heck, even under the old format, that Tony Stewart run uh, that he had when he and Carl Edwards went at it in the championship or in the playoffs, and Tony won five races, that was definitely more memorable than basically anything we've had in the elimination format when it comes to the championship race. Of course, we've had crazy moments in the championship format. Kevin Harvick wrecking half the field at Talladega, Ross Chastain doing the Hail Melon, Ryan Newman driving through Kyle Larson getting into his championship race. I mean, you have moments, but it's not like you're having these great championship moments, if that makes sense. Another question is, will Denny Hamlin ever win a championship? 12 drivers voted yes, four drivers voted no. And I just want to know what those 12 drivers are thinking. This is anonymous. You could have voted no if you wanted to because it feels like every single time Denny Hamlin's in contention to win a title, he finds a new way to lose it. It's a Sheldon Creed of losing NASCAR Cup Series championships the same way Sheldon can't win an Xfinity Series race. And then the last question was, what driver would you least want beside you on a late race restart? Four people voted for Ross Chastain for understandable reasons. Three people voted for Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano, which I'm sure will make the comment section very happy about that. Austin, Dylan, Carson Host, 
Tosvar and Kyle Larson all received two votes. One driver did not mark anyone on the sheet. And all he says is IDGAF, which means I don't give a f which is fair enough. Probably the same person that wrote it sucks ass just is not playing with this anonymous game at all. Another driver wrote based on recent events, it would be Austin Dillon. And then Austin Dillon, I can answer that one pretty easy, which feels like a Joey Logano answer for sure. So I appreciate the anonymous driver uh, questionnaire. I'd like to see it with all 36 drivers. Maybe, maybe the athletic or somebody else can put that together or um, Maybe I'll just start anonymously asking people on the internet. <laughs> Regardless, I enjoy things like this. It's always fun to get some insight from the driver. So let me know in the comments what you think about what the anonymous driver survey was, RFK expanding to three cars, and what Denny Hamlin's comments were. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.